Christmas. The moans increased. Finally, Merrill said, Monson, aren't you an elder? The time was 2 a.m. Tom had indeed been ordained an elder prior to enlisting in the Navy. Merrill said, Will you give me a blessing? I thought to myself, uh, I, I've never given a blessing. I, I've never received a blessing. I don't know that I've ever seen anyone receive a blessing. And then I remembered, I've got something in that sea bag that might help me. And I dumped the gear on the deck and took out that missionary handbook and I went into the cubicle where the night light was shining and I read how you administer to the sick. And then I went back there and gave him a blessing. And when I said amen, he was purring like a kitten, sound asleep. The next morning, as we assembled to march off to get on the buses to go home for home leave, Leland Merrill said, Monson, I'm glad you hold the priesthood. And I said, I'm glad I do too. I was just very grateful for the priesthood and to have friends that watched out for me. And I guess it must have made a, quite an impression on Tom because he's remembered it all these years and, and so have I. In 1946, the war had ended and Tom returned home. Two years later, he graduated with honors from the University of Utah with a degree in business. Turning down job offers from Standard Oil of California and Procter & Gamble on the East Coast, he chose to work for the Deseret News as assistant classified advertising manager. In the meantime, Tom and Francis' relationship had grown and deepened. Finally, Tom went to Davis Jewelry and selected a diamond engagement ring to surprise Francis. After hiding it at home, he carefully planned a special evening. On the night he determined to become engaged, Tom brought Francis to the house. As soon as she entered, Tom's youngest brother, Scott, blurted out, Tommy has a ring for you, Francis. I was very irritated to have my surprise exposed, Tom remembers. Tom and Francis were married in the Salt Lake Temple for time and eternity on October 7, 1948. Thus began one of the truly exemplary marriages in the church. My mother is the other part of my father's success story because she's been supportive of him in everything that he has done. Since the first day of our marriage, it was just a wonderful experience. We didn't question whether, you know, we felt unhappy that he was gone all the time or, or working so hard. So we just, we just sort of grew up with that. We still do. The wife of a member of a bishopric or a state presidency uh, has to live a little different life than others. You're away from them a lot to meetings. And uh, some social events have to be were gone because of a meeting here or a blessing to be given there. But I have never in our entire marriage have heard her complain. Anything I had to do in the church, she always sustained me. At the time of their marriage, Tom was serving as the 6th, 7th Ward clerk. One morning he sat silently taking minutes while the bishopric discussed the lack of success with the young people in their ward. Presently, the young clerk said, Excuse me, brethren, but may I say something about the MIA and the youth challenges in this ward? He then delivered a profound summary of not only what was wrong with the youth program, but what could quickly make it right. Then, realizing he may have been presumptuous, he said, Forgive me, I think I've said too much, and excused himself to take role in the elders' quorum. He was no sooner out the door than the bishopric looked at each other and said, What are we waiting for? They immediately called him back, released him as ward clerk, and called him to be the superintendent of the MIA. Within months, the 6th-7th ward youth program, with its committed young superintendent, 
was drawing more people to MIA than sacrament meeting. The Lord prepares his leaders when they're young. If there was ever a good example of that, it's with Thomas S. Monson. He, he was always different from the rest of us. I believe he was a born later. He had uh, energy that is beyond belief and enthusiasm that was just contagious. He has a presence when he walks into the room that people look up to him because he is a big man and they do look up to him but they look to him for guidance in every situation. It wasn't long before the new MIA superintendent was called by Bishop John Burt to serve as his second counselor in the bishopric. When Bishop Burt was called a few weeks later to serve in the Temple View Stake Presidency, Tom was certain that a ward member serving on the High Council would be Bishop Burt's successor. To my amazement, Tom said, the call came to me. Here he was, 22 and a half years old, serving a ward which had more than a thousand members, including 85 widows, and uh, one of the largest welfare loads in the entire church. Bishop Monson chose men much senior to himself as counselors. We were installed on Sunday, May 7, 1950. A fast day, Tom remembers, and immediately set to work. The old 6th, 7th Ward Chapel had begun refurbishment under the previous bishopric with the painting of its exterior. Bishop Monson followed this with extensive interior renovation, including the installation of new benches. Ward members gladly provided the labor. Tom remembers, with the redecoration of the building and a rejuvenation of spirit, the ward literally came alive. Sacrament meeting attendance doubled, then quadrupled, completely filling the building. A large part of the congregation was elderly. I had a love for the older people, Tom said. These were good people who loved the Lord and kept his commandments. Even after his release as bishop, Thomas Monson continued to take a gift and visit every one of the 85 widows of the ward every Christmas for as long as each lived. It's interesting that he has been able to speak in every funeral for those 85 widows. Uh, that's an almost impossible feat given our travel, given our committee assignments, the other things that come in the life of a general authority. But with the hand of the Lord upon him, he was able to do that for each of those widows who had so requested it. On a winter night in 1951, young Bishop Monson responded to a knock at his door. A German church member from Ogden announced his brother's family was coming from Germany and would live in the 6th, 7th ward. He asked if the bishop would go with him to survey the apartment he had rented for them. On their way, the visitor Carl Gertler told Bishop Monson that he had not seen his brother Hans for many years. Arriving at the corner of 4th South and 2nd West, the two ascended a staircase. It isn't much, Brother Gertler said, but it's more than they've had in Germany. As Bishop Monson surveyed the cold, uninviting apartment, he recalls, I was heartsick. I thought, what a dismal welcome for a family that has endured so much. Tom did not sleep well that night. The next morning, in Ward Welfare Committee meeting, one of his counselors asked, Bishop, is something wrong? And I told the committee members of my experience, it was as though the Spirit of the Lord just enveloped us. And they said, what can we do about that, Bishop? Edward Early, the group leader of the high priest, spoke up and said, I'm a master electrician and I have three helpers. We'd like to rewire that place. And I have contacts with those who sell refrigerators and those who sell stoves. And I'll get one donated, a new one, of each one of those. And then another person spoke up namely a painter, contractor, Brother Bowden. He said, I'm a contractor for painting, and I can get my paint less than wholesale. 
and my crew and I'll